night. Hello, everyone. Let's start. Uh, okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, again, my name is Vadim Manayenka, and I am the head of the engineering department and Robonomics Network. And today's topic is the smart home and web-free cloud. And uh, uh, before I start the topic, I say a bit about Robonomics. We are working on the different approaches to connect cyber physical systems and not also cyber physical systems in terms of robots, but also IoT devices as well. Uh, recently, we've got a parachain into some network, and it allows us to build those incredible things that I'm going to talk to you about today. So let's start from the beginning, and let's imagine that one day, I wake up and I decide, all right, I'm going to build my smart home. What, I, what I'm going to do? First thing would be to go to the internet and type something like, OK, buy smart devices, IoT, or something similar. And the majority of the results would be those Xiaomi or Akara vendors. Actually, they are the same, but for some reason, they separated those names. Anyway, the funny thing that is those sensors from Xiaomi do not work with the sensors from Akara, but still the vendors are the same. And the most easiest thing to set up a smart home would be to buy a starter kit, which would include a gateway and a set of sensors. Uh, a few of them, like uh, temperature, humidity, a motion sensor, liquidity sensor, probably something else. But the, from my customer side, it would be pretty easy to set up uh, a gateway to connect the sensors to it, to install an application on my smart home, uh, smartphone. And uh, that's, uh, that's basically it. I'm all set up. I have a smart home. But let's look at this from the engineering side. And me, as an engineer, looked at this the following way. The gateway is, the purpose of the gateway is to collect the data from the sensors or send commands to the sensors. And usually it works on a ZigBee protocol. Uh, sensors are really low powered devices and they cannot perform uh, a lot of communications by themselves. But ZigBee works pretty well. So we connect the sensors via ZigBee protocol to the gateway, and then we, we need somehow to interact with them when we are out of the home or check the status, even the status when we are in home. So we connect the gateway to the router, which leads us to the internet connection. Well, the main issue with this approach, in my opinion, is you do not actually know what data you share. And even more, to interact with your local sensors, you still need an internet connection because all of the sensors plus gateway, they are connected to the clouds, to the cloud of the vendor. And when you open your home up from the smartphone, you do not actually interact with the sensors locally. You interact with them via a cloud. And if for some reason the vendor decides to shut down, to shut the cloud down, you just you lose your smart home. That's it. Let's uh, observe a little bit about uh, what the cloud providers are available on the market right now. Uh, again, the most popular ones are AWS, Azure, uh, Bosch, Google Cloud. Probably something is missing, but that's the most that's the most popular ones, and all of them, uh, all of them, in general, they provide you the following architecture. So, in any case, you need a gateway that observes all the sensors, all the data from the sensors, and transmits it to the cloud provider. And on the cloud provider, you have a lot of services, and it's pretty easy to build some kind of applications on top of these providers. 
But again, the architecture is, uh, is missing this, this uh, let's say, confidentiality. So again, there is only one single point where you connect all the data from your home. And even if it's encrypted, it is, of course, it is encrypted. But anyway, those providers, they could analyze the data, not even with your ID, but with your shadows, with your footprints, with everything that you do with your home. Analyze this data to, to do something else, to sell you something or to build a greater product, etc., etc. But again, we come back to the terms that you do not actually in control of your data. You are not in control of what you share and how it handles later. All right, let's, let's solve a little bit of the problem. Uh, we can decline using these clouds, and instead we can set up the, this cloud infrastructure ourselves, locally, in our home environment, and there are projects. Fortunately, there are great projects that allows you to build this kind of this infrastructure. Uh, to name a few of them, it's Open Hub, Home Assistant, and Majordoma. Uh, I believe there are some more, but we as Robonomics team, we picked Home Assistant because of the, uh, its great availability. It supports many, many devices that are on the market. Uh, it's, it has a growing community. It's a really great community. There are a lot of uh, documentation. And of course, it's open source. We like open source, right? So Home Assistant is a, is a great pickup for your home. But the disadvantage of using this, it requires you some knowledge of how to set up a local server, how to set up those Home Assistant uh, instance, for example or open hub, etc. It requires you a little bit more understanding on how things work. But the benefit would be that now all of your data do not leave your house. It stays in your home, right? But we solved one issue with the data. OK, we do not transmit the data to some cloud providers. But what if we decide to control it remotely. The purpose of smart home is to control it remotely and to get the data from your home remotely, right? And to set up a public uh, IP address or to set up a, some instance to your home remotely, it requires you even more knowledge and it's kind of complicated, to be honest. So before I describe the solution that we provide, uh, I introduce you Viktor Glushkov. It was a Soviet mathematician, Soviet Union mathematician, and also it was a former of uh, Soviet uh, cybernetics. So it was one of the first men in Soviet Union who decided to build such a system, such a gas. It's an information system that collects, that was meant to collect data from manufacturers and industries, and even then, back to like 40 years ago, uh, people understood that there are many data outside, there are many data on the industries, and we can use the data to analyze and to create a plan. If you're familiar with USSR, you would know that uh, the whole economic system in USSR is to build a five-year plan, and then another five-year plan, and then, and then, and then. So, Back to 1970s, Viktor Glushko started to build such a system, and now we would say that is IoT system that would collect data from industries and provide the data, raw data, to analyze, to make better decisions. Also, it's very well known that uh, Coca-Cola vending machines were connected to ARPANET to uh, transmit uh, the resources that are left in the vending machine, right? Uh, and now, after a few decades, we are working with such smart devices. We are a pretty well-known protocols, such as Zigbee, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, 
It depends on the environment, it depends on our use cases, but uh, those protocols are pretty well known and a lot of devices support at least one of them. Most of the devices in the market for smart home uh, supports ZigBee. Uh, ZigBee is a very well-known protocol, and if we come back to the, our previous architecture, and now we are thinking about our confidentiality, we are thinking about how to get rid of these cloud providers, how to get rid of centralized approach, uh, we would consider the following way. One way would be to connect all of the sensors to a proprietary gateway that is automatically sends data to the vendor providers, right? The other solution would be to get an open source SLS gateway and accompany it with a, a single board computer or a PC server locally that would run a home assistant instance or something that you choose. Again, it requires internet connections and we still need to uh, resolve, solve the issue with this remotely access. And for these terms, I provide, uh, I suggest you to use uh, Robonomics Network. Actually, Robonomics Network specifically and Web3 in general, uh, what the help from the Web3? So Web3 gives us uh, the solution for a single point of failure. It's really easy to imagine how to shut down a single server. But can you imagine how to shut down the entire Polkadot ecosystem or to the entire Ethereum network or the network of blockchain in general, right? Uh, when we deal with peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections, when we build with decentralized technologies, it requires a lot of efforts to shut down the whole network, right? Also, the other, the other issue would be, all right, we can encrypt the data with our private keys, and until we have our private keys secure in our hands, we can be sure that the data does not leak to anyone. Anyone would see that some data is transmitted, but nobody would know, would figure out what the data is actually is. Uh, specifically, what's about Robonomics Network? Uh, Robonomics Network for the last few years is building an open source platform to connect your IoT devices and to work with your IoT devices. And uh, since we gathered the Kusama parachain, it, be it became really efficient in terms of transactions. There are many more transactions comparing to Ethereum Network, for example, and uh, it's much cheaper than using smart contracts, Ethereum network, etc. Uh, and uh, in general, Robonomics provides you at least two useful functions for your smart home. The first one would be a data log that provides you a way to send the telemetry of your devices to the blockchain. The second one would be a launch transaction. A launch transaction allows you to switch on and off a device. Also we can store the whole shadow or the whole digital twin of your house on the blockchain. And for this purpose, we have a digital twin module. It allows you to create a structure of your devices and to send telemetry of each device in its topic. And the whole this scheme would be saved or stored in the blockchain of Robonomics. Um, so one last thing I would mention is the only way to interact with the blockchain is to send extrinsics, to send transactions. And for each transaction, we would pay some fee, right? It's the general approach working with the blockchain. In Robonomics Network, we introduced you a subscription. The subscription, it's basically a token that allows you to send some amount of transactions with no fee Robonomics Network handles, uh, it reserves some amount of transactions per block that are privileged for the users who has a subscription token. And in general, it gives you the opportunity to work with the blockchain the way 
you work with the cloud providers. So with cloud providers, you pay a subscription every month, right? And it's pretty straightforward. With blockchain, it's kind of new thing to have a subscription. So subscription in a blockchain seems weird, but we have it. So right now, we have a few subscriptions available, and all you need to do is to just obtain a token, activate it, and from this moment, for a month, you have at least one transaction per few minutes for, for your smart home. It's enough to send a telemetry, it's enough to send a launch transaction, and it's, you do not need to think about what the rate of the token, you already get one. So that's it. Well, that's basically it, what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'm here today on the booth, and I'm here tomorrow. If you have any questions about smart home think about our expertise in IoTs or robots, etc., we have a lot of R&D projects for the last few years. Uh, I will be glad to answer your questions as well. Thank you.